Hey guys, I'm Will Martin, and I want to follow up on a YouTube short that I did earlier this evening, and it probably deserves a little bit more than one minute. And so we're going to talk about that topic in a little more detail. And the topic was rises of PSA levels in the presence of COVID-19 infection. So PSA is prostate-specific antigen, and if you're a male and if you're um, over the age of 50, let's say, or if you've got a family history of prostate cancer, at some point, you're gonna to wanna to get your PSA checked on a regular basis because rises in PSA could correlate, they don't necessarily correlate, but they could correlate with evidence of malignant prostate cancer. It's not a great test and it's not specific for cancer, but it's what's used in most settings, urologists, primary care providers, and when you have a rise, of course, it, it makes you very concerned. And so a friend, of, a friend of mine came to me a couple of weeks ago and said, I've had a rise in my PSA. It's still within a normal range, but it rose about two points from a year ago, which is a significant rise. And he wondered if having a COVID infection might have caused that rise to occur. He had had COVID about three weeks before he had his blood drawn. And I said, you know, that's a great question. Uh, let me take a look at it. it. Didn't take me very long to look through the literature and I found uh, a journal article from the Journal of Urology. And this is January of 2022. So I'm gonna share it here with you. Uh, it's entitled Variation of Serum PSA Levels in COVID-19 Infected Male Patients with Benign Prostatic Hyperplasia. So just to review, PSA, which is prostate-specific antigen, it's a single chain glycoprotein and PSA is synthesized in prostate tissue. So it's going to be synthesized in conditions of malignancy as well as in benign conditions such as aging or prostatitis, prostate infection. PSA is not cancer specific, it's organ specific. But if you're seeing a rise, it means that either the prostate is enlarging or it's infected or it's somehow inflamed or it could be cancerous. So it usually requires a little further workup if it's significantly elevated. So the hypothesis of this paper was that the PSA might be elevated because prostate tissue has ACE2 receptors. Now ACE2 receptors are found in high levels in the lungs, of course, and at the beginning of COVID, we thought that's as far as COVID infection went was the lung, but now we know that COVID infection and the spike protein travels to the lung, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, and a lot of other high expression organs such as the prostate gland. So the study looked at 91 patients. The mean age was 68.1 years. And the participants had a PSA level drawn somewhere between three and six months before they got a COVID diagnosis. When they got the COVID diagnosis, they got another PSA drawn and the results of the study showed that the PSA levels rose significantly during the COVID infection. So I'm just gonna share this graph with you. And this shows that on the left, this was pre-COVID PSA levels. In the middle in red are the PSA levels during the COVID infection. And then on the right is the post-COVID levels. And they are a little bit higher than pre-COVID, but not statistically significant. And uh, to show you some of the data tables, and you know, please look this up yourself. Don't take my word for it. Uh, these are the numbers uh, that were derived from the study, and it does show a rise during COVID infection. So in a sense, it's probably not surprising to see this we know that there's significant ACE2 receptors in COVID, or I'm sorry, in prostate tissue, and that during an infection, you're probably gonna see a significant rise in your PSA, and that's what happened here. I told my friend that uh, it, it may be related to COVID, but we don't know, and the best thing to do would be to get a repeat PSA. Also consider infection, uh, and as it was, his primary doctor put him on a course of antibiotics for a while and then has recommended that he come back and get another PSA drawn a couple of weeks later, which sounds reasonable to me. So that was the study. Now, I did that 
uh, on a YouTube short. That was the very first YouTube short I did. And I already had one person respond back to me and I think implied that I was making it up or, or something. I, I don't make things up. Um, I, I don't have time to make things up. Um, for those that don't know, I work full-time. I'm a full-time clinician. I work in emergency medicine. I also work in hyperbarics and wound care. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't have time to make things up. I wouldn't make things up. I, I'm, I'm an ethical person and just wouldn't do that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, please take a look at this uh, journal article. I'm going to put it back up on the screen, and I'll also put it in the, uh, in the notes below. Uh, but let me get back down to it here. So this is uh, variation of serum PSA levels. And this was the journal Urology 2022, volume 159. Hope you all find this uh, interesting. And uh, let me get that back over. Listening and take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.